guys, this is the first video I've put up in like 78 years. But here's the RX-7! Oh man, it's been a hiatus for me and it's been well needed. Um, this is like usually the part where I have like a list of reasons why I haven't put any content up. But I don't, I don't, um, I, uh, so as you can see, I don't have a lot of, <laughs> I don't have a lot of excuses. I was tired. I was really sleepy for a while. That was it. I had mono. That's what it was. I was in bed for three months, however long it's been. Anyway, FDRX7 project is well underway. The Civic All-Wheel Drive project is was is already broken, which is good. I'm going to give you guys a synopsis. I think that's what it is, right? Synopsis is how you say it, but I like saying it like I just ordered a hot dog at Wrigley or Comiskey or U.S. Cellular now. Where? What? So for those of you that are just joining the channel, I don't know why you would just be joining the channel because we have, well, actually Rye's been putting in videos, so maybe you came from one of his. But FDR7, if you are new, this used to be a LS powered twin turbo uh, power glide car. Well, it's been like 12 different things, but now it is a 2JZ powered T50. T56. T56 transmission these are the drag pack wheels that i have for the car but another thing that is changing is we have a more street friendly setup bc forged wheels which i have to thank dan young again for getting that fitment on point the car looks just straight nasty on these new wheels but that is neither here nor there because we still have so much work to do and then I'm going to dive into it and show you guys kind of what we've got accomplished and what's left on the docket. But first, let me give you a quick recap on the Civic Project. In all her glory, here she sits. This thing is a riot. You'll notice the hood is taped up because I had to cut a hole to get everything to fit. And there's, I don't know what all this stuff is. Bird poop-ish? Whatever. Um, this car saved motorsports for me, if you want to know the truth. I was kind of just done with the, the car stuff for a bit. And then this thing got to the finishing point and I took it for one rip. And it was so much fun that it reignited my passion. It was like Viagra for me for it's but it's, instead of boners, I got I got carb I got car boners again. Which car boners are very important in life. So the civic build went off without a hitch until I drove it the first time. We <laughs> Uh, let me, here's some clips. Here's some clips of the Civic and uh, and it making power and all that stuff, and then I'll tell you what occurred. So following the dyno session and getting the all-wheel drive buttoned up and getting the hood mounted and all this stuff, I took it for a rip and just rolled out in first gear, hit second, third, fourth, and the car was just so much fun. It's bananas. And uh, I was sold. It really, it did. It was one of those things like I, I am back in this. My head's in the right mind space. <laughs> and then I made one more hit on the street with the car and, uh, and, and the one-two shift it just lost all power and I, my words were something to the effect of I just dropped a valve and I don't know why I said it that way but I just felt it in my plums and uh sure enough it did it broke a valve <laughs> oh it sucks as much of a bummer as that was the cylinder head is now at the machine shop getting fixed the bottom end was fine luckily I'm going to put a uh, a built up cylinder head back on the car get it dialed back in and then 
I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I'll probably keep it for at least a couple weeks, but at the same time, if anybody wants a badass all-wheel drive EF sedan, pay attention to the socials because it'll probably be for sale. Back to the FD though, and what we have cooking. So, a little background. The engine, uh, Don Summerton at Accelerated Performance, he did my short block. It is a billet main uh, Manly combo. So Jesse at Manly, he uh, spec'd me out a rod piston package, um, upgraded everything, studded obviously. The head is a stock 2JZ GE NA head with valve train and valves and all that stuff. But stock ports, it's not CNC ported. Um, the guts are new and fresh, but the, the ports are stock. Intake manifold, plasma man intake manifold. My boy Darcy, he hooked it up. Um, when I say hooked it up, I mean he sweated in front of a CNC pressing buttons. I think all he does is he goes up to a computer and he's just like, boop, and then the computer does all the work. He probably doesn't do anything, and I hope he sees this. Turbocharger, forced performance, uh, 7582. This is meant for an LS. <laughs> they sell it for like a 5.3. I got a 3 liter, so we'll just see what happens. Uh, exhaust manifold is an eBay, uh, Rev9 is the company that makes it. It was like 600 bucks. The reason I bought that cheap exhaust manifold was because I wasn't sure proximity from head to frame rail if I'd have room. And I didn't want to spend a couple grand on an exhaust manifold just to find out that it wouldn't fit. Luckily, this one did fit just fine. We have, I should say we, Michael, who is doing the fab work on the project, has added a 60 millimeter wastegate flange for a TurboSmart wastegate that is monster let me get it it's insane so i <laughs> i've never had a waste gate i've had a, a jgs 60 millimeter gate which i to be honest with you i didn't like the performance of it and <laughs> this thing is huge it is huge like look at the inlet size compared to this is a giant like this this is basically a t6 compressor housing and you can see how big this damn waste gate is in comparison i mean it's just huge it's insane and we have just enough clearance down by the block to where it just settles in nice and tight. And I don't know what we're gonna do with the dumps yet, but I got some stuff in mind, but that thing is nuts in the butt. Now, intercooler is my tried and true fat house intercooler, Jeremy at Fat Fab. That and the catch can kit remain from the first time I built the car. They, uh, I say I, when they first fab the supercharger kit, that remains from that and that, which is awesome. Also, a little nostalgia. The first titanium pipe that was on the car that everyone hated on and talked all this shit. It looks like a dryer vent. <laughs> so Jeremy welded this up for me as well back in the day. So we're going to see if we can utilize this in some fashion on the car. Because I don't, I don't want to give it up. I love it too much. Now, as far as mounts go, there's no company that makes a mount solution kit for this car that I trust. There's one company that makes like a subframe for the front and the rear, like my doctor gloves, and for the rear for like, I don't, I don't even know the name of the place. They quoted me a price on their kit. And then I read a bunch of people saying that they've had problems out of the construction or this or that or whatever. And I don't know if there's any validity to these claims and I don't care. What I do care about is this car is gonna make tons of power. So I wanted something structurally safe and sound. So Michael here at Dynasty, he built the engine mounts they are still going to get an additional brace. They are using all six bolts on the block. I'll show you when the car goes up in the air. And same with the transmission mount. The transmission mount is custom made by Michael as well. The rear end in the car is still going to be an 8.8. I will show you what I plan on doing there. And just for people that are wondering about putting a 2JZ in their FD, it does fit fairly well. The firewall clearance in the back, this water outlet, we're going to have to, when I pull the engine out to finish up some other stuff, we got to pull that out and go to an AN so we can clear that. I gotta get a coil bracket, talk to Buck Performance on that already. The oil pan on the car is an SC300 and a, just a 2JZ GE oil pan. Right now you can see the ride height of the car. I know a lot of people are wondering about oil pan clearance, so the ride height of the car is in decent shape right now. Um, it does need to go lower. I would like it to just be slammed to the earth, but for argument's sake, or not even argument's sake, but for knowledge's sake, let me show you the oil pan clearance we have with the mounts made the way they are. So we got, we got plenty of room. Um, you can see, obviously that's the lower oil pan right there. I do have a good chunk of room. Matter of fact, let me get a measuring tape. And now you can see, we got a 
come out of a room. Which, God, you can tell I haven't made a video in a while because all I got are terribly awful corny jokes, which really isn't that much different than before. All right, so that's a little bit of a better representation. Not really, though, because it doesn't look like that. I mean, it, it's fine. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, the angle, the dangle, I got about four and three quarters to the ground, and my exhaust will be tucked nice and high, and it gives me room to come down on the car just a bit. So, excited about that. Not excited about my steering rack boot, though. Damn! That sucks. Right, the car hasn't changed much, but it has changed. We have a Haltech Nexus R5 ECU system. Their can keypad. And the piece de la resistance, which is Spanish for I have a hair in my omelet. An IC7 dash as well, which those things are pretty slick. I'm excited about that. I need to clean this interior up though. It's nasty. It's been sitting all dusty as hell. This is a relic too. You're only a real OG if you've ever had one of these. Shout out to Brandon Gonzalez. The Gons on Instagram. I've had this since like 2008. Stays with every car I plan to keep more than five minutes. Under the car, if you watched the last video I put up 10 years ago, the fuel cell stuff, Michael knocked out and killed it. So the whole trunk is flat bottom now. Aluminum cell from Rock Solid Motorsports. We had to sump the tank. And I have a single feed going to my Aeromotive 10 GPM pump. This thing is a killer. Uh, I plumbed the fuel system the other day. I didn't film because I am who I am. But we have a 10 gallon per minute pump, 10 AN uh, feed line with an 8 AN, 8 AN return. The feed and the return run together. P clamped and nut serted all the way up to chassis to a inline fuel lab filter. And then fuel line feeds up around to the top of the rail. And then the return obviously comes from the regulator up yonder. Getting it away from power steering rack is important. While I'm underneath here, I can show you guys the mounting situation. Also note, my level of craftsmanship versus most. This is, this is all gonna get redone. Um, this, is, this isn't good. This was my work, okay? This is Michael's work. <laughs> so you can see there's a clear difference. Um, but transmission mount, Started as a standard, uh, I think, Sandberg mount that we've had to cut and modify. Um, mounted into the OEM locations. This needs to get reinforced up here and here, but for placement purposes and to get the intercooler stuff built, hot side built, that is what we did. Um, engine mounts, you can see, are also custom made. Probably a better shot over here. These engine mounts, um, they just go to the factory 2JZ locations. However, instead of the four bolts, we are utilizing all six bolts and another brace will be made from center mass here to the plate here to keep an even spread and support across the entire mount, which is nice. And you can see the clearance on the engine to rack and oil pan and all that. A little better shot. That's how low it hangs below the subframe. Uh, this is a Sandberg subframe as well um, that's going to get pulled out and coated. Um, and then obviously my steering rack bolts are going to get shortened as well. And this stupid boot's going to get fixed. Now on the clutch situation, this is a quick time bell. And I sent it to my guys at Monster Clutches, Steve Addison and Monster. Uh, and I, don't, I might be repeating myself from a previous video, but Steve has come through with something I'm extremely excited to be piloting. Um, Monster Clutches has been just an amazing company. Uh, throughout the time I have worked with automobiles. And this is the first ever, we don't need the masks anymore. I think those are, are outlawed, or not outlawed, but not needed. We have the first Monster triple disc T56 to 2JZ clutch kit. So I will be trying my hardest to break this as a courtesy to Steve. I'm going to try to destroy it. That's my goal with slave cylinder and everything. This thing I'm extremely, extremely excited about this opportunity. This is going to be cool as hell, and I cannot thank Steve and the Monster team enough. They have been straight up the best. I love those guys. And girls, not to be sexist. There's females that are involved as well. So it's 10 million degrees already in here. It's like 8.30 in the morning, and I am going to get to work. I got to pull the rear end out of the car because I am going to a Ronin welded-in mount kit. Um, this kit has been great. I'll show you. A lot of people, when I posted up this, uh, there was a, there's a thread where people are saying that these can't hold power, you can't make any power, and blah, 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 blah. I have gone 129 to the 60 on this rear end. 
I have gone, not this, not specifically the pumpkin, but this mount. Um, it has been reliable as hell. We have gone deep eights with this. The only reason I am changing is because I need to get rid of any type of flex points at all. And having a bolted in unit versus a welded in unit is kind of a no brainer when you're trying to go fast with a stick shift. Now, again, this thing has gone extremely fast. I haven't had any problems out of it, but I wanted to switch it up and uh, go into the direction for the season. But if you're looking for an 8.8 mount kit, uh, this one will be for sale. Not that I'm trying to pitch a sales on this thing, but uh, if you are looking for one and one of these comes up, do not be afraid to purchase. They have done extremely well by me, and I can recommend them if you're trying to go fast as well. This is so much easier with a trans jack. Oh my God. But gives you an idea of the belly of this thing. It's all OEM stock stuff that needs to be cleaned up and painted very badly. Um, stock subframe, stock ears, stock everything. The only thing it has is that bolt in kit and the iron based 88 housing. I broke an aluminum housing, so I sacrificed the weight and said, let's go iron just to be safe. This is a stock Cobra diff that's been built up with extra clutches and stuff. So it's not anything special. And this diff has gone 120 to 130 in the 60 without fail. And the last little mini project today is a clutch pedal back in the car. So this car was a stick shift LS car now, and then I went automatic and now I am back with a stick shift. So, uh, just a clutch adapter kit, just a billet block, two bolts. It's super, super easy to install. And that's your feed to your master. I'm sorry, your slave cylinder in the trans throat bearing combo unit. Whoo, it's 10,000 degrees in here. I know this was a short kind of uh, overview of what we've been up to. Hopefully more content to come. Bye.